keep in touch with what was going on well, in the was, world. Well, it was, I mean, I, I mean, I mean were, people, thought I was, science, people thought right? I was freaking crazy because I was like the guy, I was the Harvard guy with yeah. the, I had like the, I don't know if you can picture the guitar that the guy in the Scorpions has, like the Gibson Explorer with like the shark <laughs> fin. And so it was like a real metal, gold, kind of metal looking guitar. And, you know, and I would wa literally wander the halls almost till dawn every single night, you know. They, you know, kids would come out to go to the restroom where there'd be a study session. There'd be Morello, you know, <laughs> shredding in the stairwell. <laughs> um, I played in bands then too, which which you know, kind of which really pushed my progress along. So it was mostly cover bands. What were you uh, back then? A student of the history of rock and roll? Or not could really, you? Not really. No, not really. I had a um, you know I, I had a few cassettes at college, a few albums, a few you know some Clash and some Ozzy, and that was sort of the bookends of the mm -hmm. uh, But not so much. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like you could. Think about Link Ray or Heavens, Paul no. Perkins. Heavens, had nothing to nothing to draw. Like huh. I mean, when I would go home in the summers, I would go, I would uh, get albums out of the of the Libertyville Public Library, and that's where I discovered like Paganini and with some of my guitar heroes, and I'm like Inve Mouse. They, they would cite these people in, in articles. I would look up their yeah. work, and yeah. you know, that was in part of things. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, uh, were you satisfied with a Harvard education? I mean, there's not too many rock stars that graduated. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was sad. I don't know about satisfied. It was. Uh, I, you know, it's all part of this the, the, this journey. You know, yeah, and, uh, and you know, probably some of the most instructive things that I have some lifelong friends that I made there. And you know, I went there with the explicit purpose of it of it stealing my resolve to create revolutionary change in the world. I didn't go there to become a doctor. I didn't go there to become a lawyer. I thought about you know for a while I thought about a career in zoology, but then my guitar playing sort of took over. But I, I really went there to you know to know as much as I could about the levers of history and how I might be able to grab on one and pull it. Mm -hmm. Why was it political science? Why wasn't it history or American studies? Well it was I mean broadly defined that the actual the actual major on my on my diploma is social studies. They right. have a but, but social studies is an umbrella major and then you can sort of focus on mine, mine as well. Social, social studies, studies yeah. yeah. But nobody yeah. understood if you say social yeah. they think they remember like coloring in maps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. you know, except it's tens of thousands of dollars a year to color it up the map. <laughs> But probably the most, you know, the the, 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 the the best part of my education there, well, at, at the time Harvard had such a huge endowment that they were able to accept their freshman class need blind. So they didn't, it's not like the wealthy kids get, it's like they accept the freshman class, but there were maybe like kids from 80 different countries in my class. Yeah. And which was a, and so the learning experience happens in the cafeteria. And it also happens at the pro, it was during uh, the divestment movement where Harvard University had invested money in corporations that profited from doing business with apartheid South Africa. So we, I, was, I wrote my senior thesis on student uprisings in South Africa and was a part of the student uprising at Harvard against um, Harvard's investments. And what we did was we built Shantytown in Harvard Yard, which is a very beautiful place. It's been there since the mid-1600s. Uh, when the um, alumni would come a couple of times a year, to see how beautiful their university was and to write their big checks for the university, we would build shanty towns that looked exactly like the Johannesburg shanty towns where people were suffering under part time rule, so that when they would arrive, they would see their beautiful lawns covered with debris and these shanty, and they, that didn't go over very well. But it was instructive. It's like, you know, like, you know, even in the you know, hollow halls of Harvard, you can really you know, stand up for what you do. Did, you said you made some lifelong friends, yeah. but the, the bands that you Formed. Were they Harvard-based bands? All Harvard-based bands. They were. Yeah, yeah. One of them was embarrassingly named. Well, this is like more of a confession than an interview. One of them was embarrassingly named Board of Education. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> It was like cover something, you know, yeah, it's like yeah. and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you graduate, and yeah. then what happens? <laughs> then I graduate, and my plan is, I have a very clear plan. I'm going to go uh, spend the summer uh, in Libertyville, raise money uh, for my, and then pack up all my worldly possessions and head into the setting sun to move to Hollywood to pursue a career as a rock musician. And uh, there were uh, a lot of hard surprises along that road. <laughs> I, I thought that I, uh, despite, despite four years and an honors degree in political science, I didn't know that a thousand dollars didn't go very far. <laughs> 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 Did you get your Harvard 